In medicine pulmonary artery catheterization is the insertion of a catheter into a pulmonary artery. Its purpose is diagnostic. It is used to detect heart failure or sepsis, monitor therapy, and evaluate the effects of drugs. The pulmonary artery catheter allows direct, simultaneous measurement of pressures in the right atrium, right ventricle, pulmonary artery, and the filling pressure of the left atrium. The pulmonary artery catheter is frequently referred to as a Swan Gans catheter, in honor of its inventors Jeremy Swan and William Gans, from Cedars Sinai Medical Center. The idea for a sail or balloon tip modification of Ronald Bradley's simple portex tubing method came about from Swan's observation from the Santa Monica shore of sailboats on the water on a relatively calm day. Boats with conventional slot sails were still. One with a spinnaker was able to make reasonable headway. The concept of using thermodilution to measure cardiac output was originally the idea of Arnost Franek. As a former colleague of Franek, Gans added the thermistor modification after Swan showed him the initial balloon design, which was fabricated by Edwards Laboratories, which had previously contracted with Swan as a consultant. Indications General indications are management of complicated myocardial infarction, hypovolemia versus cardiogenic shock, ventricular septal rupture versus acute mitral regurgitation, severe left ventricular failure, right ventricular infarction unstable angina, refractory ventricular tachycardia. Assessment of respiratory distress, cardiogenic versus non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema, primary versus secondary pulmonary hypertension. Assessment of type of shock, assessment of therapy, afterload reduction, vasopressors, beta blockers, intraaortic balloon counterpulsation. Assessment of fluid requirement in critically ill patients, hemorrhage. Sepsis, acute renal failure also known as acute kidney injury, burns. Management of postoperative open heart surgical patients, assessment of valvular heart disease, assessment of cardiac tamponade constriction. No study has definitively demonstrated improved outcome in critically ill patients managed with PA catheters. Therefore, the primary justification has been on the basis of clinic experience. Procedure the catheter is introduced through a large vein a euro often the internal jugular, subclavian, or femoral veins. From this entry site, it is threaded, often with the aid of fluoroscopy, through the right atrium of the heart, the right ventricle, and subsequently into the pulmonary artery. The standard pulmonary artery catheter has two lumens and is equipped with an inflatable balloon at the tip, which facilitates its placement into the pulmonary artery through the flow of blood. The balloon, when inflated, causes the catheter to wedge in a small pulmonary blood vessel. So wedged, the catheter can provide an indirect measurement of the pressure in the left atrium of the heart, showing a mean pressure, in addition to a, x, v, and y waves which have implications for status of the left atria and the mitral valve. Left ventricular end diastolic pressure is measured using a different procedure, with a catheter that has directly crossed the aortic valve and is well positioned in the left ventricle. LVEDP reflects fluid status of the individual in addition to heart health. See also pulmonary wedge pressure and ventricular pressure. Technical developments, thermal dilution, after Swan developed the initial balloon tip, Gans used for an X idea and added a small thermistor about 3 cm behind the tip. Either cold 10 ml of saline under 10 degree Celsius or room temperature is injected into an opening in the right atrium. As this cooler fluid passes the tip thermistor, a very brief drop in the blood temperature is recorded. A recent variation in design is the incorporation of a heating coil on the catheter which eliminates the cold fluid bolus, a major factor in human technique variation. By attaching both the injector site and the ventricular thermistor to a small computer, the thermodilution curve can be plotted. If details about the patient's body mass index, core temp, systolic, diastolic, central venous pressure CVP and pulmonary artery pressure are input, a comprehensive flow versus pressure map can be calculated. In crude terms, 
This measurement compares left and right cardiac activity and calculates pre-load and after-load flow and pressures which theoretically if stabilized or adjusted with drugs to either constrict or dilate the vessels to raise or lower the pressure of blood flow to the lungs, respectively, in order to maximize oxygen for delivery to the body tissues. The ability to record results is not a guarantee of patient survivability. The true art remains with the consultant physician or intensivist in balancing fluid load, so much so that the introduction of a balloon catheter, which is usually yellow, has been nicknamed the kiss of the yellow snake. Pharmacotherapy lumens, modern catheters have multiple lumens a euro five or six a common a euro, and have openings along the length to allow administration of anatropes and other drugs directly into the atrium. Drugs to achieve these changes can be delivered into the atrium via the fourth lumen, usually dedicated to medication. Common drugs used are various inotropes, norepinephrine or even atropin. A further set of calculations can be made by measuring the arterial blood and central venous and inputting these figures into a spreadsheet or the cardiac output computer, if so equipped, and plotting an oxygen delivery profile. SVO2 measurement one further development in recent years has been the invention of a catheter with a fiber optic based probe which is extended and lodged into the ventricle wall providing instant readings of SVO2 or oxygen saturation of the ventricle tissues. This technique has a finite life as the sensor becomes coated with protein and it can irritate the ventricle via the contact area. Alternatives, various other techniques have largely relegated the PA catheter to history for example the lithium dilution technique. The external bioresistance monitor or the very simple and reliable technique of esophageal Doppler measurements of the descending aorta. Complications, the procedure is not without risk, and complications can be life-threatening. It can lead to arrhythmias, rupture of the pulmonary artery, thrombosis, infection, pneumothorax, bleeding, and other problems. Controversy the benefit of the use of this type of catheter has been controversial. Therefore many clinicians minimize its use. Evidence of benefit, several studies in the 1980s seem to show a benefit of the increase in physiological information. Many reports showing benefit of the PA catheter are from anesthetic and intensive care settings. In these settings cardiovascular performance was optimized thinking patients would have supranormal metabolic requirements. Evidence of harm or lack of benefit, contrary to earlier studies there is growing evidence the use of a PA catheter does not necessarily lead to improved outcome. The following explanations have been advanced. One explanation could be that nurses and physicians were insufficiently knowledgeable to adequately interpret the PA catheter measurements. Also, the benefits might be reduced by the complications from the use of the PAC. Furthermore, Using information from the pack might result in a more aggressive therapy causing the detrimental effect. Or, it could give rise to more harmful therapies. Utility of pulmonary artery catheterization, this interpretation of Adolfix formulation for cardiac output by time temperature curves is an expedient but limited and invasive model of right heart performance. It remains an exceptional method of monitoring volume overload leading to pulmonary edema in an ICU setting. A feature of the pulmonary artery catheter that has been largely ignored in the clinical setting is its ability to monitor total body oxygen extraction by measuring the mixed venous oxygen saturation. Regardless of the value obtained by measurements of the cardiac output, the mixed venous oxygen saturation is an accurate parameter of total body blood flow and therefore cardiac output. The assumption that a low mixed venous oxygen saturation represents less than adequate oxygen delivery is consistent with physiological and metabolic observations. High oxygen extraction is associated with low cardiac output and decreased mixed venous oxygen saturation. Except during hypothermia and in severe sepsis, low mixed venous oxygen saturations are indication of inadequate hemodynamics. The ability of the pulmonary artery catheter to sample mixed venous blood is of great utility to manage low cardiac output states. Non-invasive echocardiography and pulse wave cardiac output monitoring are concordant with if not better than invasive methods defining right and left heart performance. 
the advent of MRSA and similar hospital-based catheter infections now clearly limits the utility of this type of invasive cardiac ICU intervention. Notes. References. Froner K. Gans v. Measurement of Cardiac Output and Peripheral Blood Flow by a Local Thermodilution Method, CSL Faisal 8 189, 1959, Froner K. Gans v. Measurement of Flow in Single Blood Vessels Including Cardiac Output by Local Thermodilution, SIC Research, 8175, 1960. Swan H. J., Gans W., Forrester J., Marcus H., Diamond G., Conet D. Catheterization of the heart in man with use of a flow-directed balloon-tipped catheter. N. Engel. J. Med 283, 447 a Euro 51DOI, 10.1056-NEJM197-0082728309.02. PMIDA 5434111, Intensive Care Medicine by Owen and Rip, the ICU book by Marino. Procedures and Techniques in Intensive Care Medicine by Owen and Rip, External Links, Thermistor for Catheter, Imedson, The St. George Guide to Pulmonary Artery Catheterization.